Greg Mancube, blah, blah, blah. This was written April 23rd, 2010. The professor is Dr. Jim Wolscheid, or however you pronounce his name. The course was Economics 2803, Principles of Macroeconomics. The assignment to read a blog by textbook author Greg Mancu at gregmancu.blogspot.com. Is D.S. Pope being actively recruited for the anti mancu movement? Will he or won't he? The economic world awaits with bated breath. Perhaps I should join this so-called anti mancu movement. After all, after reading Mancu's blog about his proposed Pagovian-based one get dollar gas tax, I don't see much point in listening to anything this guy has to say. Notice, of course, that it's not that I disagree with the supposed end results of the tax, reduced traffic, carpooling, reduced CO2 emissions, etc. I object to his actual motivations for the tax. As I have stated frequently in my earlier papers, Take a closer look, follow the almighty dollar, read Graves of Wrath, and types of BS about the first blog and should I read, etc. What Mancu actually complained about was other drivers on the road. I found this to be a particularly narcissistic approach to economics. After all, this was Greg Mancu's road. What the hell were other drivers doing congesting his road? Why didn't they move closer to work or carpool or use public transportation or teleport to work? Even Mancu, the only other person with any reason to be on his road. I got it. Let's hike up the gas on tests so that poor people can't afford to drive. Think of the millions of dollars in tax money that the government will use to blah, blah, blah. Of course, the dissenters, silly peons they may be, quickly pointed out the logical absurdity that if you charge more per gallon than the equilibrium price for gasoline, then consumption will then decrease, and so will the tax dollars. The gas companies will have to eat into their own profits in order to keep the prices low. Either way, the long-term economic impact will be nil. Also noted was the protest that it would be much more feasible to increase fuel efficiency or to switch to alternate sources of fuel. Further, it appears that Man Q completely and spastically forgot his own basic principles of economics, specifically that everybody faces trade-offs. Oh, and that one about being aware of unintended consequences. Mancu is blatantly willing to trade the environmental impact, corporate profits, and financial stability of poor commuting workers in order to enhance his own personal convenience. Of course, there is the other extreme. I certainly don't want to fall into the hands of the ulti anti Mancusian, a fellow by the name of C Nut. See the description box below. This fellow seems to be just as much of a narcissistic screwball as Mancu himself. Only this guy seems to relish in his own air of self-importance. Perhaps there is a good balance between the two camps. It is true that Mancu is a competent economist, and I suppose he can be trusted as an intellectual. But, as some detractors have noticed, he seems to lack the ability to relate to people's problems here in the real world. All I know for certain is that all of this drama will be over in just a few weeks when I end this course, at which time the only point of reading Man Q will be to try to put myself to sleep. Now, all that having been said, as much as I agree and or disagree both at the same time with Greg Man Q's ideas, I will say that I can at least respect him for writing the blog. I don't have to agree with somebody to tell that he is at least trying to be open and honest about the things that he believes. Now, if you can just get the politicians to do the same thing...